I was the intended victim of a scam using my son's voice. And uh, here's the story. I was on my way to work. My phone rang. It was my son. He was crying. He said, Dad, I was in an accident. I hit another car being driven by a pregnant woman. My nose is broken. They arrested me. I'm in jail. They assigned a public defender to me. His name is Barry Goldstein. You need to call him. You have to get me out of here. Help me. I said, Brett, I'll call him and I'll call you right back. He said, you can't. They took my phone. Help me, Dad. I'm a father. I'm a lawyer. My son's in trouble. A pregnant woman was hurt. He's in jail. I'm in action mode. Before I could do anything, my phone rings again. It's Barry Goldstein. I just met with your son. He's hurt. He has a broken nose, but he'll be OK. He hit a car being driven by a pregnant woman. She was taken to the hospital. They arrested your son because he failed the breathalyzer test at the accident scene. I said, wait, my son would never drink and drive. He said, Brett told him that, but he had an energy drink that morning, and that may have caused the failed test. He said, uh, I should take some steps if I wanted to to bail my son out. I said, of course I want to do that. He said, well, I'll give you the phone number for the courtroom, courthouse, and here's your son's case number. You should call the courthouse and bail him out. I immediately called the courthouse. They answer correctly. I tell them why I'm calling. They said, what's your son's name? They asked for the case number. They said, yes, uh, your son's here. Bail was set at $90,000. You need to post 10%, $9,000 to bail him out. But there's a problem. I said, what's the problem? The county bail bondsman was away on a family emergency. And the, uh, he's not available. He said, but there is a solution. You, there, you can post what they called an attorney's bond. I said, I'm an attorney. He said, yes, but you'd haven't entered your appearance on behalf of your son. There's a Mr. Goldstein that did that. You should perhaps call him back and try to get him to, uh, to post an attorney's bond. Hang up, I call Mr. Goldstein back. Mr. Goldstein, can you post the bond for my son? Yes. You need to wire me uh, $9,000. He said, I'm a member of a credit union, so you need to take the cash to a certain kiosk, which will get the money to me. And I'm scheduled to leave for a conference in California. I'll be leaving to the airport in two hours, so you need to move quickly. I learned later that that kiosk was a Bitcoin kiosk that would convert the money to cryptocurrency. I hang up. All of these calls happened in, a, in two minutes. This is the first time I had a chance to think. I called my daughter-in-law and suggested that she call work and tell them that my son wasn't going to make it today because he was in an accident. A few minutes later, FaceTime call from my son. He's pointing to his nose. He goes, my nose is fine. I'm fine. You're being scammed. I sat there in my car. I was physically affected by that. I was, it was shock and anger and relief. I decided that I would try to keep Mr. Goldstein engaged in the scam while I invited law enforcement to, to become involved. I contacted the Philadelphia police, and they said because I had not lost the money, they couldn't help me. I called the local FBI office. They said, look, there, were, there was burner phones and cryptocurrency. They were aware of the scam and that they were unable to, to bring back cryptocurrency once it was out of the country or wherever it went. And so they were unwilling to get involved. And that left me fairly frustrated because I had been involved in, cons in consumer fraud cases in my career, and I almost fell for this. So the only thing I thought I could then do was to warn people. So I approached the Philadelphia Inquirer, and they did a feature story. Um, and Fox News ran a uh, segment on their morning show. The scam hasn't abated. Since that article came out, I've received 20 to 25 calls throughout the country of people who have been contacted by Barry Goldstein and who had lost money. 
and they were devastated. I mean, they were emotionally and physically hurt. They almost were calling to get a phone call hug because they were so upset. And they asked me, you know, what could I recommend? And I said, look, the, the, do what I did, go public. Oh, and the other suggestion I had was to go to the bank where they, where they bank and suggest that tellers inquire about anyone that's taking out a lot of cash that doesn't usually do that. That was the only thing I could come up with. The, the, the cryptocurrency and AI have provided a riskless avenue for fraudsters to take advantage of all of us. They have no risk of exposure. I know that there's economic benefit to cryptocurrency, but I also know that it causes substantial harm um, to, to society and financial harm. To me, you know, it's fundamental if we're, if we're harmed by somebody, there's a remedy either through the legal system or through law enforcement. In this case, there is no remedy. And that fundamental basis uh, is broken. And I hope that this committee could do something about that. Thank you.